Today in our 2006 Winnebago Chalet, we're going to be installing Roadmaster's front anti-sway bar. And this is what our new sway bar is going to look like when it's installed. It replaces your original sway bar and offers increased rigidness due to its larger diameter. What this means for you is it's going to further reduce sway on the vehicle, so when you're driving down the road you won't have so much rocking back and forth from side to side. It'll give you more control over your RV. Due to having less sway, you won't have to compensate much left and right on the steering wheel. What that really all means for you is you're going to have a more enjoyable driving experience, it's going to be safer, and it's going to fatigue you less so you'll have more time when you get to your destination to enjoy the things you like doing. We'll begin our installation underneath the front of the vehicle by removing the original factory sway bar. We're going to use a 15 millimeter socket to remove the four bolts holding the sway bar in place. There's two on each side of the bushing that holds the sway bar on. We're going to remove those. Once you have all four removed, your sway bar will be loose and you can simply pull it towards the front of the vehicle to remove it from the I-beams. The ends here poked into the holes located on the I-beams. You simply pull it forward to get it out of those holes. Next, we're gonna remove the nut off the bolt that's just below our coil spring. In order to remove this, you're gonna to wanna to use a 14 millimeter wrench to hold the bolt and a 30 millimeter wrench to remove the nut. I've got the wrench kind of sat in a position where it's hitting up against the rotor to hold it. As they can be on very tight, especially being an older RV. We'll do that on the other side as well. We'll be attaching brackets to this, so save your nut. Next we'll be installing our brackets onto the bolt that we had just removed the nut from. If we look over here at the bolt, we've tweaked our bracket slightly so it fits over our beam here. We had to thread the bolt up a little bit further and now we can slide it on and line the hole up with our bolt. Once you've done that, you'll take your bolt and you'll want to thread it back down or tap it back down with a hammer. We can then place our large nut back on the bottom of our bracket. We'll then take the bolts and nuts that come in the kit. We're going to thread a nut onto that bolt. The bolt is then going to thread down into the threaded hole here at the back of our bracket. You want to make sure you have a nut on it first. We're going to thread this down until it hits our beam here to clamp it nice and tight. First, we'll tighten our nut back down to factory specification. We'll then tighten and torque our clamping bolt here with a 16 millimeter socket. Then we'll tighten the jam nut below it to lock it in place. We'll now repeat this on the other side. We'll now prep our sway bar for installation. Take the bushings that come in your kit. We're gonna be using the bushings that are matched up with the brackets that come in the kit. You'll have two different bushing sizes. You don't want to use the ones that don't fit in the brackets. They're a bit longer, as they look something like this. We're going to slide those out. We're going to use some of the lubricant that comes with our kit. We're going to spread it around on our bushing. I'm going to smear some on the inside all the way across and then I like to put just a little bit on the outside that can just help eliminate some noise we'll then take the bushing and we want to put it on our sway bar we're going to do it here on the far ends like that it just slides around it you can then put your clamp on there you don't have to put this on now because it does tend to sometimes fall off while you're putting the other one on We'll do the same thing on our other side of our sway bar. We'll now take the sway bar, we're gonna lift it up and reuse the original hardware where we removed our original sway bar to get it mounted back up. When lifting it up, before you install your hardware, you wanna make sure you put a spacer plate between the frame and your sway bar's bracket. Let me go ahead and get these up now. It doesn't hurt to have an extra set of hands to do this as it is pretty heavy. It can be done with one person but it is difficult. 
Once you get one bolt installed on each side, it'll hold itself up, making it easier to install the rest of your hardware. We'll now take our end links that come in our kit. We're gonna take the nut off the bottom side, slide off the washer and bracket, and one of the bushings. We're going to slide that down through our lower bracket and then slide the hardware back on. Bushing, washer. Make sure the washer's cupped around the bushing. Bracket. And lock nut. We can then undo the top, take the nut off, take off the washer and one bushing. Lift your sway bar up, slide it onto the bolt, and then reinstall the hardware, just like we did on the bottom. We're gonna do this on the other side as well. We can now go back and tighten out our hardware. Our bushing brackets will tighten with a 15 millimeter socket. And then torque those to the specifications found in your instructions. We can now snug down our N-Link hardware. I like to position the angle here on our N-Link 2 towards the rear of the vehicle so that way there's a little relief for our steering arms. We'll then tighten them down with an 18 millimeter socket. We just want to tighten them down until the bushing stops spinning. We don't want to crush it until it squishes any further than the width of the washer. And we'll do the same with the top. We'll now repeat that on the other side. And that completes our installation of Roadmaster's front anti-sway bar on our 2006 Winnebago Chalet.